Hello and welcome back to AB 474, Indoor Environmental Control. We are in Chapter 5, Heat Transmission and Building Structures. And um, we're toward the end, so we're working on the final section. And this is the section where we're going to start to bring together um, the individual modes of heat transfer that we've already talked about. So we've already looked at conduction, convection, radiation, and then we briefly looked at evaporation and condensation. Um, <clears throat> so we're going to put those together in what's called mixed mode heat transfer. And as we've already uh, indicated, mixed mode heat transfer refers to simultaneous occurrence of conduction, convection, and radiation. And in order to work with um, mixed mode heat transfer, we're going to use an energy balance approach, which at this point in your uh, engineering curriculum you have all seen, uh, but we're going to get a lot better at it. Um, and for uh, the purposes of this section, I'm going to work through examples in order to demonstrate mixed mode heat transfer. So we've already laid all the foundation as we talked about each individual one, and we've even started building them. So we've talked about um, equivalent resistances and, and building together conduction and convection, conduction and convection, radiation into um, <clears throat> equivalent resistances. So we've already seen that we're well prepped. Um, so we're just going to dig right in with a couple of um, examples. So um, if you recall, we had a fun little example when we were looking at radiation uh, with the baby elephant. So we're going to kind of continue along that theme, but this time we're going to take a look at the structure of the housing for the elephant. elephant. So let's look at the barn that our elephant is inside. Uh, we have some information about uh, the solar load onto the roof, and so in this problem this is a given. Um, and then we know a uh, little property, so we know what how much energy is coming onto the roof from solar load, and then we um, know a little bit about the roof uh, in terms of its absorptance. Um, we know our outside and inside temperatures. Uh, we go ahead, we can calculate this if we need to, so based on what we've already done, we can look at calculating an R value of the roof, but in this case it's going to be given just so we can put the pieces together and demonstrate how the pieces go together. Um, and we're given our inside and outside uh, convective heat transfer coefficients, and then um, <clears throat> we're told that we can make an assumption about um, uh, radiation and again we could calculate that number if we need to in future examples um, we'll see um, how to calculate some of these numbers and in future chapters um, and then we're asked to determine what is the temperature of the lower surface of the roof uh, with these conditions <clears throat> So, as you well know, the first thing I like to do is draw a sketch. So let's lay out our problem. <coughs> Reading through the problem, um, we could determine that we are going to need to consider convection and radiation and conduction. And it may not be entirely clear from reading the problem, but as you think it through, hopefully you'll agree that we do need to consider all three modes of heat transfer as a part of this problem. Uh, and let's go ahead and list out our givens. All right, and in this problem, like I said, we were given a number of things that just simplify the calculations so that we can demonstrate putting them together. And in future problems, they can be a little bit more complex as we're asked to calculate some of these things. Okay, so there's a list of, of the things that were given and uh, required. Solve for the lower surface temperature. And 
and we're gonna um, denote that as T L sub S. All right, so as I said, I like to start with a sketch. So let's first draw, this is our roof. Um, in terms of what we're doing today, it doesn't matter the uh, uh, dimensions of the roof, because uh, we, we can work this problem uh, without knowing the dimensions of the roof. Okay, and it's important to recognize that there is some structure for this roof. So there's a, an upper surface and a lower surface. So we're going to go ahead and label that as the temperature of the upper, upper surface and the temperature of the lower surface. This is the temperature we're asked to solve. <coughs> um, but we're going to want to do our energy balance on this upper surface because that's the surface that we have um, our description for and it's essentially where we're going to start. So we have some amount of solar radiation that's coming onto our surface. We have an outside temperature, inside temperature, let's get those on here. <clears throat> so we have some amount of solar radiation coming onto our surface. We have some amount of radiation leaving our surface. Um, I'm going to extend this down so I can continue my picture. We have some amount of energy that's being lost to convection, to the outside, to the uh, environment. And then we have some amount of energy that is being conducted through the material. Okay, so we have solar radiation coming on, we have some amount of radiation leaving, we have uh, convective heat transfer happening at the surface, and then some amount of energy from the surface is being conducted through the, the building material. All right, so we need to do, as I said, an energy balance on this upper surface. Heat balance or an energy balance. <clears throat> and essentially we're going to say that the energy that's coming on, uh, so we have solar energy coming on, <coughs> <coughs> and we have convective losses, and radiative losses, and conductive losses. Um, so the amount of solar <coughs> that is coming from the sun um, is not necessarily the amount that is impacting the surface. So that's where we factor in our um, absorptance value. So this SO is the amount that's coming onto the surface, but the amount that's truly transmitted um, due to solar uh, is corrected by the amount that's actually absorbed by the surface. And then if we want to do convection, it's our heat transfer coefficient times the difference in temperature between inside and outside, be between the surface and outside, sorry about that. Um, we're not going to have to calculate radiation in this problem, it's just a given, so um, the amount of radiation leaving the surface we can now calculate, um, but for simplicity we're going to just take the number that we're given. And then for um, <coughs> the conductance, or the the amount of energy uh, transmitted by um, conduction is the difference in the um, uh, upper surface and the motivating force here. Now there's kind of an, uh, an, an assumption that has to be made here because we don't know this temperature of the lower surface. That's what we're going to calculate for. Um, so we're going to model the this portion as a combination of the conduction on the inside and the or the convection on the inside and the conduction through. So we're going to go all the way from our upper surface to the inside, okay? And this R will need to represent the resistance here and the resistance at the surface. <clears throat> okay, and then if we solve for this, we're going to solve this for the upper surface temperature. Okay, um, so let's see, before we 
plug in numbers and solve for that, <clears throat> let's review what the different <coughs> some of the different values that we need to plug into this are. So we already stated, but we need to be clear about it, that solar is the Q solar is the amount of solar energy that is actually affecting the surface and QSO is the amount that's incident onto the surface so this is the amount of solar energy that is just hitting the surface okay. so just make sure that we're clear on our what our variables mean And then we said that um, in order to solve this part with the um, conduction, we would model it from the upper surface all the way to the inside. So we need to acknowledge what this R is going to be. <clears throat> so let's go ahead and do our thermal circuit here. Inside and then lower surface. So ultimately this is what we're going to solve for but in the meantime since you don't know this we can jump from one to the other based on our uh, principles of uh, uh, thermal circuit circuits and combining uh, conduction and convection heat transfer coefficients. So R of the roof plus R in gives us the R which is this R that we're going to use over here um, and since we have those values, we can plug them in. We get 1.5. Alright, so now we should have all the values that we can plug in to calculate our upper surface and if you plug those numbers in you should get uh, 270 Kelvin or approximately minus 3 degrees Celsius is the temperature of our upper surface. Alright, so now we need to solve for the lower surface. <clears throat> and at this point um, we know um, upper surface, we know our R's and our H's, and um, we have this upper surface and this lower surface, or the upper surface and the inside, but we can just um, uh, put, uh, put our, our heat balance pieces together to solve for lower surface. So we go back to substitute in the, the lower surface here, and it becomes our only unknown. <coughs> So temperature of our lower surface is the temperature of our upper surface plus R of the roof over R of the roof <coughs> plus 1 over Hn, which is the same as what we were doing above for this R. Uh, but I'm writing it all out just to demonstrate. And then the, ch the difference in temperature. So essentially, um, instead of going from here to here, now we're going from here to here, but proportionally. All right, so proportionally to the resistance of each one of those. <clears throat> so if we solve for, <clears throat> excuse me, the lower surface temperature, we should get 16.6 .6 degrees C, which is 289.7 Kelvin. All right, um, work through that, and if you have questions about it, bring them to me outside. Um, but that's a simple uh, example of putting our mixed mode heat transfer together in order to uh, solve a, a question about uh, temperature of our um, roof surfaces, so the lower surface. Um, we're going to move on and look at uh, another example. And in this example, um, we will uh, again be looking at a roof and And this problem is uh, from the Albright text, problem 316 on page 88. So it's another.
mixed mode heat transfer. So let's take a look at the problem. <clears throat> All right, so again, we have a roof of a barn, um, and it has some amount of uh, solar radiation coming onto it, and we have absorptance uh, of the roof, so some roof characteristics. We have uh, some uh, information about uh, the environment, so this time we're gonna have to calculate uh, the amount of solar that actually comes onto the roof and uh, we're told, so this is not in your textbook, uh, it's in the Albright reference, so in order to calculate this there are a number of models that you might use and this one uh, that we can use from our uh, additional reference material is called the Swinbank model. Um, we also know that the roof is exchanging thermal energy by con convection uh, with the air uh, and going. We have some additional information about our roof characteristics. So our roof has some insulation and we know the temperature um, inside <coughs> <coughs> and based on the um, <coughs> characteristics of our roof we know that our thermal resistance uh, and this is important so kind of similar to the last problem that we worked where this resistance is a combination of both the uh, convective and radiative resistance so that's important to know. Uh, it's like your inside co uh, convective coefficient includes both convective and radiative. So, um, Temperature of lower surface is important to in terms of so what is the lower temperature with these given conditions? So this is a similar problem to the one we just worked but in this case some of the things that would have been uh, given in the previous example are not given so we need to calculate them. So let's um, build on what we did in the last example and work through this one. <clears throat> Alright, so we are given um, information about our roof. So I'm going to start with my sketch in the givens this time uh, because a lot of what we're given uh, we need to do something with that isn't directly usable. All right, so <clears throat> this time we are, um, let's see, we have our sun that's providing some energy onto the roof surface. And we know it is 600 watts per meter squared. Uh, we're told that our roof has an absorptance of 0.6. We're told that we have some uh, energy being lost by convection, some energy being lost by radiation, and some conduction through the roof. <clears throat> um, let's see, properties of our roofing material, we have an emissivity, a transmissivity, and a reflectance. <clears throat> and if we want to take a look at our wall section in a little more detail uh, for the roof, So our indoor convective coefficient is given to us, and our indoor temperature is given to us, and our outside conditions are specified. And our outside temperature is specified. <coughs> and our um, roof thermal resistance its char characteristics are also given. All right, so um, I think that's all of the givens for this problem, and we've kind of sketched them out a little bit. Um, we were asked, much is the same, much the same as the last uh, example problem, to solve for the lower surface temperature. <clears throat> All right.
right, so um, in this case, we're not given uh, information about uh, the radiation that's leaving the, the surface of the roof. So we need to spend a little bit of time to figure out what is the radiation that's leaving the surface of the roof. That's really the, the, the biggest, the main new part for this problem from the last one. <clears throat> So we know all ambient conditions, <clears throat> except for this variable that we're going to call T sky. So if you think in terms of radiation exchange, the, there's something that needs to be um, emitting the radiation and something that needs to be receiving the radiation. And in, in the case of radiation leaving the surface of a roof, the radiation is leaving the roof surface and it's interacting with the sky. And so as the sky isn't a solid surface, so it is um, not as straightforward as saying it's the temperature of the air. So we have this um, model that, as I said, is um, presented in the uh, Albright reference uh, to um, help predicting radiation exchange with the sky. So this is one model. I'm sure there are many other models out there. Um, this is the one we're going to use for this class. All right, and it is called the Swinbank model. <coughs> an equation that looks at the temperature of the air and makes a correction. So there's a coefficient and a um, exponent. <clears throat> okay, once we have that, um, we are ready to look at our heat balance on the upper surface. So we need to uh, calculate the <coughs> value for the radiation exchange and we should at this point have all of our values to plug in. So if you notice, <coughs> the radiation equation that we use for this is using the shape factor that's consistent with a small object, object uh, interacting with a large space. So pretty much everything that we lose from the surface of our roof is going to be intercepted by the sky. Okay, And so uh, it, the equation simplifies greatly <coughs> as long as our model for our um, um, large object, which is our sky, it uh, gives us a, a temperature that is representative of uh, the uh, motivation or the, the driving force for that radiation exchange. <clears throat> okay, so if we plug in our values, we're going to get, um, I'll go ahead and write these out since we haven't done a radiation equation yet. So our Emissive value, our Stefan Boltzmann constant. Um, <clears throat> our temperature upper surface, which we don't know yet. Um, and then minus our sky temperature, which we found to be 284.2 Kelvin. Yep. And then we're going to take this and plug it into <clears throat> the heat balance equation that we saw in the previous problem, which is essentially what comes onto the surface uh, is equal to what leaves the, the surface. Um, and recall that when we do conduction, going to bypass or skip over that lower surface temperature uh, in the initial balance and we're going to combine the uh, roofing material and the inside convective coefficient um, in order to <coughs> solve for that portion of the heat transfer. <coughs> okay. 
All right, and I am going to, uh, for all intents and purposes, give you a little bit of a challenge here, and I'm going to say some magic happens. Now, I'll come back in a few minutes and show you the magic, but I'd like for you to stop here and try to work the rest of this through uh, to see where you are uh, in terms of understanding uh, what to do next. Um, I will go ahead and tell you that the lower surface temperature you should achieve is 30.3 degrees Celsius, but I will also tell you that it's not as straightforward of a, a solving process as the last example because you have this upper surface temperature raised to the fourth power, so you're going to need to do a little bit of additional um, solving, so using a solver or using an iterative process in order to arrive at this solution. So right now, why don't you pause the video, uh, take a break, and then um, come back in a few minutes and we'll see if uh, you found the magic. Okay, so here's where we left off and I said some magic happened and I wanted you to go practice your magic and see how you did. Uh, but I promised I'd come back and we could review this <clears throat> to make sure that uh, you're comfortable uh, with the solution. All right, so um, <clears throat> let's just start with our balance equation and review what should be substituted in for each of the variables. And then um, we'll look at the actual value that should be substituted in as we expand out the variables. and. Um, uh, finding the solution for what should be the upper surface temperature and then the final solution for the lower surface temperature. Okay, um, so if we want to look at um, each variable in our uh, heat balance equation, <clears throat> we need to know how much solar energy is actually impacting the surface and then we need to expand out our convection heat transfer and we need to <clears throat> substitute in our radiative equation. And our convective, but it's technically convective, um, conductive, our conductive equation, but it's technically conductive combined with the inside convection. Um, and that's the beauty of looking at mixed mode heat transfers that we can combine uh, heat transfer uh, components uh, such that we can <clears throat> solve for our unknowns. All right, so what goes into each one of these? <clears throat> our, um, well, actually before we put anything into each one of those, let's go ahead and get our unknown moved over to this side of the equation, okay? <clears throat> so let's move our, the radiative portion that includes uh, our upper surface temperature and our convective portion that includes our upper surface temperature and our um, inner conductive and inner convective that includes our upper surface temperature. <clears throat> and then let's look at everything that's left over. I guess I could have put that right up here. Let's do that. Okay. All right. <clears throat> now, what gets substituted in for each one of these? Um, our emissive emissivity values, our emissive uh, property of our uh, roof is 0.9. Our Stefan Boltzmann constant, 5.67 times 10 to the minus 8. Um, and our upper surface temperature we're solving for. The convective coefficient uh, here is 30. Be careful when you put these in to make sure that your units are canceling so that you, sometimes it's easy to get confused between one over R, R, H, one over H, like which way do you put it to make the units work out. So pay close attention to that as you're um, working through your, your problems. 
let's see, R is going to be 2.2. Um, our absorptance, as we know, is 0.6. Our um, solar insulation is 600. So I'm using a different word for this solar part, insulation. So whenever we talk about uh, the amount that's coming from the sun, that's called insulation. So we originally, during our radiation, said that anything onto the surface is irradiation. That can come from any source. When it specifically comes from the sun, it's insulation. So new vocabulary word. Um, we've already identified our uh, heat transfer coefficient here. Um, our T out is 25 degrees Celsius or 298 Kelvin. And in this case, it should be Kelvin. <coughs> <coughs> All right, um, and then our uh, emissivity, we've already identified that. Our Stefan Boltzmann, we've already identified that. Um, our T sky, we identified above, but let's go ahead and write it in again to 84.2 Kelvin. Uh, and the reason that we need to do this in Kelvin is because our units are in Kelvin, so we need to stay consistent across the board here. And then um, our inside temperature, 30 Celsius or 303 Kelvin, and then our R is 2.2 as we identified here. Um, <clears throat> and that comes from R of the roof plus R of the inside convective coefficient, which is 2 plus 0 0.2, which is equal to 2.2. 0 .2. 0 .2. There we go. Um, so now we have everything on this side is a value, and we can plug that in and get a number. And then our unknown is our temperature upper surface on this side. And so, as I said before, we can use an iterative process or we can use a computational software um, to, in order to solve for this upper surface temperature. And whenever you do that, <clears throat> you should end up with 306 Kelvin or 33 degrees Celsius. And from there, you need to solve for the lower. Let me push that up there. There we go. We need to solve for the lower surface temperature in the same process as um, in the last example, so I'm not going to work through that again. Uh, and as I said, the lower surface temperature um, results should be 30.3 degrees Celsius. So with that, those are our two examples on mixed mode heat transfer, and this is going to conclude the lecture portion, the video lecture portion of our uh, chapter on heat transmission through building structures.